Hey, seriously, thank you guys for showing up today. Uh, been a lot of craziness today. Holy cow. Been some uh, crazy online traffic uh, conversation about uh, lead sources and uh, and making sure we have multiple lead sources, all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, we're not going to go into that today uh, on this uh, Facebook Live, but I'll tell you what, we will have a Facebook Live coming up very, very soon. Uh, and hopefully we're going to try and get Zillow uh, onto a Facebook Live with us so we can talk about uh, kind of how Zillow works and the good, the pros and the cons and, and let everybody talk about, you know, is Zillow trying to get agents out of the business or are they really just trying to help agents? out and and provide a quick, great quality lead source for us uh, and uh, and so we'll have all kinds of great conversation about that but for today we are talking with Tristan Ahumada, Mike Bjorkman and my, and uh, Brian Curtis about Facebook leads and how to get more Facebook leads in some creative ways this is part two uh, of a two-part series that we did with Tristan uh, specifically on Facebook leads. So that being said, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Michael Hellickson with Club Wealth. I'm one of the coaches here. Uh, and Mike Bjorkman, uh, another great, uh, we call him a faculty member of Club Wealth. What that means is Mike's a smart guy, knows a lot, and now has finally acquired better than dial-up internet access. So we'll be able to <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! <laughs> And then we've got Brian Curtis, uh, out of Bentonville, Arkansas, Brian is on track to do 350 transactions this year in Bentonville. He's freaking crushing it. Uh, one of the smartest guys in real estate, uh, also a Club Wealth coach and my partner in Club Wealth Expansion Services. So as you guys know, we have teams all around the country and uh, we actually partner with them. We actually uh, we become financial partners in some of these teams. Uh, this is aside from our coaching that we do with agents all over the country. And uh, so anyway, Brian Curtis is with us. And then last but certainly not least is Mr. Tristan Ahamada, uh, the uh, man, the myth, the legend, him itself right here live with us. Tristan is uh, the owner of Lab Code Agents. He's uh, got 60, what, 67,000 agents or 62,000 agents or something like that in your group. Uh, and uh, just crushing it on his Facebook group. He's also a real estate agent uh, in California. He's kind of covering that. What, where are you at? You're like, uh, thousand, not Thousand Oaks. What are you? Uh, West Lake Village Malibu. West Lake Village Malibu. God, I always screw that up. Sorry, Tristan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, Tristan's a freaking stud. We love him to death. So uh, that being said, Tristan, what are we going to learn today, man? Oh, man, lots of good stuff. So part one, we learned how to create the ads, how to put them out there, what to look for. I'd say in part two, I was focusing a little bit more on the follow-up, what to say. And last time, I don't think we had Brian. Brian, were you with us the last time? I absolutely was. <laughs> oh, and live. Live, you weren't with us. That's what it was when we went to that event. Yeah, uh, my plane got stuck in Bentonville. Couldn't get out. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because <laughs> that's never happened before. <laughs> the only plane in Arkansas. <laughs> we missed it. Well, the, I think the problem was they were having trouble getting the fertilizer loaded on the plane in time. So <laughs> we're out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. I wanted to see yeah, uh, a little bit more of what Brian had this time too, and kind of combine what we had. So you want me to get started or you want Brian to get started? We want you to start Tristan. Perfect. Hit it Tristan. Let's hear it brother. Let me switch over my screen here. All right, tell me when you can see this puppy. We got it. We can see you, man. All right. Um, so last time we talked about Facebook leads, and what we don't talk enough of is follow-up. What do you do when you get a Facebook lead? Online lead. So I, I created this so that everyone could see it. It's exactly what we do specifically for Facebook lead ads. Um, and here's what we do. On day one, we're immediately following up with a call. If there's no pickup, then we get into a call again 10 seconds after. Uh, the purpose of that is you don't know if that person is just doesn't recognize the number and won't pick up, or if somebody's actually on another call and won't pick up. We don't know where they're at. Uh, so that's why we hang up, we don't leave a message, and we call them right back 10 seconds later. Usually that shows them, oh, you know what? This person may really need to get a hold of me or this may be important. So they'll hang up or they'll stop what they're doing and they'll pick up that second call. Uh, if no one picks up, then we leave them a voice message. Five minutes later, we send them a text. The reason we do this five minutes later and not immediately, we wanna make it look like it's, it's more real because if we're calling them two times in a row and then we're texting them at the same time, it seems more automated Plus, it's a Facebook ad. It's not a realtor.com. 
lead or a Zillow lead where it's being sold to five to 10 people at the same time, right? So you have a little bit more time. 10 minutes later, go ahead. Hey, Tristan, so I wanted to just – there. I guarantee you there's people watching this right now. And the thing that you talk about in the immediate – I refer to that as a double dial. I think uh, someone termed that – coined that term a double dial. There are people who are going, oh, I never want to do that. I never want to do that. It's going to make people angry. It's going to make people unhappy. You know, they're going to feel harassed. So let, just before uh, you move too far, too far forward, address that. I'm sure you've had some negative reaction, but address what happens when you do that double dial. Yeah, it's a great point. So this is what happens. When you're calling them that second time or even a third time, because I know some people that do, and that person picks up, they want to know what the hell is going on. Why did you call <laughs> two times? Why even yep. a third time? So your dialogue and your tonality has to be on point. If it's not, don't do it. Our, our tonality is right on, my ISA and myself. When we call them, we say like, hey, Brian. And you'll be like, yeah, what is it? It's like, Brian, this is Tristan. Just inquired about homes on our website. I'm just getting back to you to see how I can help you. And I'll be like, well, you know, and then you can tell whether or not they're angry. So then you can address it. Say, so, like, I didn't mean to call you two times in a row. I just want to make sure that we are helping you. Absolutely. Oh, I appreciate that. I think it's important to know that it's okay to do that. And you need to be able to handle the script when, when people get a little bit frustrated because you can turn those people. But if you don't, if you don't know that and you're scared of that, if you don't go in with that right attitude, then that's going to fail. So I really appreciate the, the script and the tonality is everything. Cause remember, you know, 93% of communication is nonverbal. Guess what? If you're on the phone, you don't have a lot of other options at that point in time. So yeah, that's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. And I'll be honest, if, if I were double dialing and it's all of a sudden somebody picks up, they're like, you know, why the heck are you double dialing me? Or, you know, why'd you call me again? I'd say something like, you know, God, I mean, I'm really sorry. Sometimes my system just does that with the, you know, when the system being me and the written system that I've written down <laughs> yeah, that says phone. I'm going to do that every time. Right. So I'll just literally say something like that. Like, man, I'm so sorry. Sometimes my system just does that. That being said, I just, I just really want to help you out. So, yeah, that's it. And people, when, when you tell them you want to help them out, they're like, no, 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 we're just looking right now. Or we're just browsing. Or oh, I accidentally just clicked on that button that said download or send me more info, right? We get all three. So then we just go through that objection really quick, which is, I know you're just browsing, but tell me more about why you're looking in this area. Tristan, I got a question for you. I'm looking at your screen here and it says day five bomb bomb video. Why wouldn't you do that day one or two? So day one, they're already getting bombarded. Uh, we had to tweak that. We initially were throwing that bomb bomb video out on day one. And it was just way too much information for, for that for the people. So and we, then, then not day two? Not day two. No, we pushed it to day five. Uh, Interesting. Is you that know, something that's been time tested or are you just beta ing that now? Uh, we've tested it out for three months so far. And okay. every time we put it on day one along with everything else, we seem to have a better response from our nudge text. You see 30 minutes to 45 minutes later. Right. Oh, I love that. That nudge text. That nudge text and the 11 a.m. day two text, that's those two. We have the highest percentage on a uh, response rate right now. So gotcha. ours, when, go ahead. the the video thing for us or me, me specifically, is when I'm trying to get a hold of somebody day one and I can't get a hold of them, they ignore the text, they ignore the email uh, and the nudge text. At night, I send out the bomb bomb and say, hey, tried to get a hold of you all day and go through a script. You know, I can show you foreclosures and short sales, not out in the market, give you a list of those things. And that response has been amazing. So I was just dying Ooh, to know if you've tested good, this. That's yeah, it's like, hey, I've tried all day. You know, I know you're busy. I'm busy. I can do these things for you. So I was just curious and not to interrupt the whole thing, but. Um, no, that that's awesome. So we, we still feel that email isn't isn't going to give us the highest response rate. So we leave that for day five after day four is silent. Um, this is specifically, now this is really, remember, specifically for Facebook lead ads. Right. Um, it's a little different when we get a realtor.com, Zillow lead, or even a Google PPC lead. Um, but this, this has worked well. Right now, our response rate for this whole thing, right now, we're at about 55% response rate. So one out of every two wow. people actually respond, and they respond 
between day two and day three the most. Interesting. It's that awesome. uh, second text and uh, and the third text. So, so, uh, cool. so, Tristan, real quick, what I want to ask you is, um, so first of all, the nudge text, and I just typed into the screen because I, I know a lot of people aren't sure what that is, but I want you to share. It's your, the nudge text you're using, I'm assuming, is still let me know dot, dot, dot. Is that correct? Yeah, I've tweaked it a little bit, but in essence, it's the same thing. Um, Are I'm you doing a smiley face or what do you, how did you tweak it? <laughs> no, here's what I'm doing. I say, please let me know so I know what homes to send you. There you go. Good. Okay. And have you noticed any difference in response from that versus the old standard? People are responding more now. More now. So the new the new nudge text, go ahead and, and give it to us one more time. Please let me know so I know what homes to send you. Okay, I'm, typing that, I'm typing that into the group right there. I love it. Please let me know so I know what homes to send you. Go ahead. Keep moving on forward. All right, so that's the nudge text. Uh, day two, then after that, we just we leave it alone. Uh, we get a lot of responses through, honestly, from the calls. We get people calling me back. Uh, we get people texting us back. Uh, the last thing we want to do is remember, these people are different than your Realtor.com or Zillow leads or your portal leads. Those people are looking for a home now. They want to meet at a property sometimes, like instantly. This, on the other hand, is different. You're getting people at their very beginning stages for the most part. That's why the percentage and conversion from actual lead to closing is somewhere between 1% to 2%. And so knowing that, we're not pushing them as much. We want to be gentle. We want to nurture. We want to treat this more as a relationship from the very beginning. And that's why we're less aggressive. I mean, this might look aggressive, but it's actually less aggressive. <laughs> well, and one of the things I would tell people is you guys start thinking in terms of pleasant persistence, right? So we want to be pleasantly persistent, but we want to we want to follow up as a servant, not as a salesperson, right? So one of the things that we always love to use is the, the our, our follow-up line of, I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. It's extremely disarming and it changes them from being in a position of feeling sold to feeling like, oh, you're just trying to help me out. And their instant response is almost always something like, oh, no, 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 it's not you. It's me. Right. And I always like to tease Bjorkman. That's that like that's like his girl in high school. Right? <laughs> Whatever. It is. <laughs> wow, we digress. <laughs> uh, but it works really well. Right. All right, so let's go back to your let's go back to your your slide there. So one of the things I want to know that I'm not seeing in here is video text. Where are you doing a video text, or are you doing video text? We're not using video text right now on the Facebook lead ads because we're finding that the regular text is working really well. Okay, we are testing it on other sources like uh, our expireds, and that's been working okay. We're getting good responses on that. Not a, a, as a great response as this. We're at 55% here, which is huge for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this, we haven't tested it out yet uh, well. So I don't so feel what, I'd love to see you test that out, Tristan. I know, Brian, you just ran, you, you just did this with your team. And, we, and uh, tell me, you just had an agent that sent out 52 of these. Talk to us about her results and what, what she sent out and what her results were. Right. Yeah, it's real simple. So we had an agent on our team and it's kind of funny. Everyone kind of laughs at me on my team because I've been saying send out video text for six months. I'm like, send out video text, send out video text. And I love the leverage that it creates. So one of the agents on my team, she'll remain nameless, but she joined our team uh, just a couple of months ago. She's had two closings, so she's relatively new, but still at the same point in time, she's got some experience and she had been texting people. And so she just went through every single person that she texted. She sent out 50 eight video texts. They were unpersonalized. So the script was this, hey, this is Britta with Curtis Realty Group. We're just following up to see if you're still looking for a home. That was the video text that she sent. She sent it to 58 people. Her, her comment was it took two minutes. My guess is it probably took a little bit longer than that. But even if it took 10 minutes, she got 11 responses from that and they were just old leads. Well, these are old leads, right? So that's yes. a little bit different. I agree Absolutely. With, with what Brian is saying completely. I think with older leads, you've got to try lots of different things. One of those is, is text video, for sure. Yeah, we agree. Because, you know, the reality is if I've called you 27 times and you haven't answered the phone, doesn't mean I shouldn't call 28, but maybe, just maybe, I should take a different approach. <laughs> maybe, right? 
Maybe. Yeah, seriously, man, you can't beat that. So let's go back to talking about how you're getting that 55% response on your uh, lead ads, Tristan. All right, let me take you back here. You guys can see my screen again? Can. Yep. Okay, perfect. So, um, like I said, day two and day three are really important here. Um, that nudge text is great on day one. Uh, but day two and day three, all those people that weren't able to respond on day one because when I reached out to them, they were either – cooking, with their kids, at work, doing something where they couldn't respond back. That day too, you notice I'm doing it a little bit differently. I have a 9 a.m. call and no message and a midday text. And the midday text is very simple. It says something along the lines of, hey, I'm sorry I did, wasn't able to connect with you yesterday. Please let me know how I can help you with your home search. It's very simple, um, not aggressive. And when we're leaving a message on day one and day three, you see day three, 9 a.m. voicemail, it's not a message that's saying, hey, this is Tristan. I sold a cabillion homes, and I'm the <laughs> best agent out there. I can show you homes here, there, everywhere. Call me. I mean, that's the last thing you want to do because that's what everybody else is saying, right? You don't want to leave one of those messages. Your message should be really simple, letting them know that you're here to help, that you're giving them value. What's your value? I don't know what it is in your area, but in my area, it's really hot right now. It, well, weather-wise, it's super hot. It's like 110, 120. <laughs> but the market is really hot too. Wait, I have a question. Mike Bjorkman, can you hear Hello? me? Hello. Yeah, just, you got you to remember. It's like it's it's like you got to. It's like sending smoke signals. You got to give him a minute for his dial-up to pick up the message. Dude, so. I was on mute, trying not to cough in you guys. <laughs> Yes, How's Tristan, it? it's 150 here. Trust me. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know, man. Okay. It's hot, Back dude. The... I'm about to tear this jacket <laughs> off. If it wasn't for Michael, I'd be naked right now. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Not need to hear that. Oh, <laughs> that's that's part three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> part Trying three. to get people to tune in. All right. Yeah, <laughs> we just lost a few viewers. It's <laughs> all about the radio, guys. Okay. Oh. Well, back to back to the voicemail. I don't know how it is in your area, but in our your homes are selling really fast still, for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so, our value is showing people that we have homes that are off the market, right? And so that's, that's in our message, in our tonality. We're letting them know that we're not aggressive, but we're here to help them out by showing them homes that are not on the market yet. Because guess what? Everyone has a real estate agent. Everyone knows one. Their family members one. That's like the biggest, biggest objection we get all the time. And I don't care anymore. If you've got an agent, I don't really care unless you've signed a buyer broker agreement with them. And you have to have the same mentality because a lot of the people drop it right there. Oh, I've got an agent. Okay, great. You know what? Have a great time. See you later. Hey, Tristan. Okay, so I got to ask you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brian. I was just going to ask you some scripting along those lines. So I, I, I completely agree with you. We have a made-up number, and I made it up, and I don't know if you've done something similarly. But on our team, the rule is assume that they are talking to seven other agents. And I just made that number up. I don't know if it's true. I feel like it's relatively accurate. I don't know if you have something similar to that. So my question that I would ask for you is what's your script asking them if they have an agent? I've got one. I just kind of wonder what you're using for that. Yeah, I always, I always go, great, uh, Brian, you've got an agent. So I know agents myself too. And my family knows agents. That's, <laughs> there's a whole bunch out here. Uh, but let me ask you, Brian, is your agent also sending you homes that are off the market? You know, they're not. I do get some, something, they send me this thing every day from a whole bunch of homes, but honestly, there's nothing in, really that I really love on there. So got it. no, well, that's, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, what we offer our clients and, and some of uh, our customers too, we send them homes that are off market. What it means is the properties are for sale. They just are never going to hit the MLS or they just haven't hit yet. What I'll do is I'll start sending you some of those. Can you tell me your criteria? Sure, absolutely. I'm looking for a three bedroom, two bath in Malibu under 1.5. Great, where are you looking to make a move, Brian? Good luck. <laughs> I don't know the market, obviously. Um, I'm looking to move here <laughs> in the next uh, 60 days. <laughs> all right, 60 days, all right. We're gonna go through all of that. And then towards the end, I'm gonna ask, Brian, now, if I do send you a home that's off market, the way that it works is since it's off the market, I'm not always representing the seller. So are you comfortable me representing you if I do send you a home that you really like? 
You know, absolutely. I don't necessarily have a commitment to anybody else. And if you can find me the home I'm looking for, that's great because no one else has yet. Great. And then I just go for the clothes and that's it. Okay. So, and let me ask just one better question. And that's what I was, and that's awesome. What I'm trying to get at is do, when do you ask them? So my script is this, I don't ask them, do you have an agent? Because my response 90% of the time is yes, I do. So they can get me off the phone. So yeah. what we've switched to is how many homes have you looked at? And then, oh, we've looked at five or six homes. Okay. So who showed you those homes? Um, I don't know, some guy over at Remax. And so I want to know if they really have an agent. Because if you don't know, remember your agent's name, my thought is that you probably don't have an agent. But um, so yeah, I was just yeah. wondering if you're doing that. We don't do that because there are times that they haven't seen properties at all and their brother-in-law or their sister is an agent. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that they're going to let me know that too. Sure. But both, um, both angles are good. The point is just to give them something of value so that they can say yes to you. Because then they'll oh, tell you the okay. truth. I've had agents tell me, I'm, I'm sorry, I've had clients tell me, no, you know what? We're working with this person and it's okay. We don't need properties that are off market. I said, okay, great. Yep, absolutely. One, one of the scripts that I like for that is I always tell people, don't ever ask, do you have an agent? Because to Brian's point, they're always gonna say yes just to get you off the phone. So I always say, who's your agent? And then they'll either stumble or they'll pop right out with a name. And if they pop right out with a name, I'm like, okay, it sounds like they might be loyal to that agent. So then I would follow up with something very similar to what Tristan is saying. I'd say something like, okay, fantastic. So you're working with Joe over there at, at Remax. That's great. So let me ask you this. If I had a property that was off market and, and maybe I didn't represent the seller. So the only way for me to get paid is to actually uh, represent the buyer in that transaction. Would you feel comfortable if I showed you that off market property? Uh, would you feel comfortable using me to buy that house or, or would you feel obligated to use Joe over at Remax? Um, you know, so again, I just want to go a little bit deeper. I think really the point here, you guys, is is to have the conversation and ask them and go deeper. Don't just give up. I think the next piece of this, we, you know, I was on the phone with a client this morning who kills it with his buyers, does a very good job. And one of the things that they're doing is they'll literally, when they're getting ready to go out and show somebody a home, if there's any question at all, they'll say to the buyer, they'll say, hey, look, you know, so uh, when we go out and show you this property, one thing that's important to us is. Uh, we want to know that if you buy that particular property that you would buy it from us, would you feel comfortable with that? And they'll say, yeah, you know, I'd feel comfortable with that. And then they say, okay, fantastic. Well, we have a document that we're going to have you sign when we show you that property for just that one property. If you happen to buy that one property, are you comfortable with that? And they'll say, yes, we're comfortable with that. And so what that's doing is it's getting them to sign stuff. I think there's a downside to it too, right? You're, you're limiting the number of people you're going to be able to get face to face with, which I think, I think that is a concern. That being said, it's nice because once they get out there, they're getting a, a single property showing agreement or single property agreement signed by that buyer, which gets them taking steps toward doing business with you. I just, I would be careful with that because I think it's a lot quick. Yeah, I think you guys are getting way too in depth with this. We all know set the appointment, right? <laughs> we can talk about all that at the office or at the house. I mean, I'm not going to have a 45 minute conversation about agents. You know, you can go through the scripts like, hey, if you knew your agent was going to call you every afternoon and went through a 21 point marketing checklist of everything they're doing to try to find you homes, would you feel comfortable? That's that's all for later. You know, is your agent calling you every day, telling you what they did today to find you a home? Are they emailing you homes, or are they are they calling you and telling you about homes that are not on the market? All that's great, but that but right now I'm like, dude, hey, I have a foreclosure, a short sale not yet on the market. Another one like you called on around the corner with the pool of you, cul-de-sac RV parking. Would you like to see this homes tomorrow at three or would four be better? And that's that's and Mike, you're hitting the nail on the head. That is exactly the point. It's you know, we always tell people it's like crack, right? First one's free, then you gotta pay, right? Get them <laughs> out there to show them a house. That's all that matters. I, you know, it doesn't matter what it takes. Just go meet with them the first time and stop, you know, qualifying them, you know, or stop disqualifying them for the appointment. Right. So, all right. That being said, uh, let's keep moving. So, Tristan, get let's get back to your screen share and back to how you're converting these things at 55. percent That's insane. Oh, and actually, I got a question from Tom Tilliard. By the way, those of you that are asking questions on our, on the Facebook group or on our Club Wealth Facebook page, uh, we're going to make sure that we get to your questions. And know this, every time you guys ask a question, you're going to get a, an entry into the Hawaiian Vacation Giveaway Drawing that we do every year. And we give away not just the Hawaiian Vacation, but we also give a lot of other cash and prizes, about $15,000 in cash and prizes throughout the year. Uh, and you don't even have to be present to win those. So that being said, Tom Tillier asks, if you don't have an email address, do you have a source that you have found to be the most accurate to gain the email addresses? Tristan? What was the question? I was reading the questions on the on the Facebook. Uh, Perfect. If you don't have an email address, 
Uh -huh. Do you have a source that you have found to be the most accurate to get the email addresses? Um, yeah, so far we we like Coal Realty. Coal Realty has been great for us. Coal Realty resource, and uh, sometimes you, you throw them onto Vulcan and it gives it to you too. But mostly Coal Realty. Uh, Brian, what do you use, man? Coal. Coal Realty works great for me. You know, we're we're getting about forty percent accuracy there, which honestly is not as good as I'd like, but. You know, it's just another opportunity out there, and I'm also a big fan of trying to Facebook stalk them. So <laughs> we do that with everybody. Good point. Good point. Perfect. All right, All right Tristan, back to you, man. Let's do it. Right. Here's one. Uh, you know what? As we were talking, I actually just responded to somebody. Uh, here's a second text that went out. It says, "Hey, Fritz, sorry that we haven't been able to connect uh, about your home search. How can I help you?" That was day two. His response right now, as we were talking, is thanks for the follow up. Reality is that I'm not in the position to buy right now. So then, my text back to him is going to be, "Got it. You know, when do you think you'll be ready? I'll keep sending you homes too, and I'll have my ISA give you a call. I won't say ISA, but I'll have my <laughs> business partner give you a call." But that's that's part of the response. We need to know where they're at, right? We don't want to try 50, 60, 70 days later, keep on trying and not know where this person's at. Now we know that we need to nurture this person. So it's really important to, to have your scripts down towards the beginning, whether it's by text, email, call, voicemail, whatever you're doing, because it's gonna make that job easier for you later. That's why our response rate is so high at 55%. So you just hit the name, you just, you, you hit on something that was really subtle and I don't know if people notice this or not, but one of the things you said, Tristan, was that I'll have my business partner contact you. It wasn't I'll have my assistant contact you or I'll have somebody else contact. It was I'll have my business partner contact you. And what that does is it passes the authority. This is actually a very important NLP technique because you're passing the authority to that other person and making them very, very important in the eyes of this consumer. If you fail to do that, you will have a lower conversion rate than when you do pass that authority effectively. That's that's true, man. I've been telling people that have team members that have a team, don't don't tell whoever you're telling, hey, I'm gonna have my team member call you or or I'm gonna have my team associate call you. I just let them know I'm gonna have my business partner call you. And it's not about the ego for for me or I'm I'm I know not for you either. It just it it puts that other person that you're giving them at equal status with you so they'll feel comfortable being sent to somebody that has that same status as you. They won't yeah. feel like you're pushing them down the line. That's very true. I used to say, I'll have my colleague call you. And from taking your guys' advice from switching it to colleague to business partner has made a world of difference. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh, okay, that's a legit same as you. So I agree. Cool, guys. All right, so uh, where are we at? Day, day four for these, we're testing out been a month so i'm not sure how how it's doing but so far so good day four we give it a break with these leads because we're finding a lot of these facebook lead ads anybody else we're really we're really the only ones so we're comfortable doing that day five that's when we're sending out the video midday uh, we haven't had a huge response from the videos but we are seeing that they're being opened a lot which is which is good day six email again just a simple email. Day seven, we have a call and a, and a simple text. Now, the reason I slow it down is because day two and three, day one, two, and three, that's when we're getting almost everyone's response. It's, and it's been really huge for us. Day five, six, and seven, very slow. We don't see a lot of people respond on those days because most of them respond to day one to three. After that, it's really we're probably not going to get as big of a response anymore, either because the email was wrong, we have the wrong information, or these people already put us in spam. I mean, Brian, Mike, what have you guys noticed? So what I do after day seven is they go on my blasts. So I send out weekly and monthly blasts, which are more general, just um, like my favorite one that we've ever sent out is, did you know that the CEO of Zillow sold his house for 40% less than his estimate? So it's not necessarily, are you looking for a home or anything like that? It's just kind of interesting stuff. We sent out uh, the she shed is the new version of the man cave. I mean, we send out silly stuff like that. And then every once in a while, it'll come in with something like, hey, the market's really hot. Do you want to, you know, you want a home value? So it's like 
10, nine out of 10 are just gee whiz fun stuff. And then every once in a while we throw something in there that's basically some sort of call to action because like you say, a, a lead ad, um, you know, a Facebook lead of some sort, who knows? I mean, the realistically, I tell people this all the time, I can get more clicks, I can get more people to click on an ad that I run on Facebook. But just because you clicked on the ad on Facebook doesn't mean you're interested. If you're on Zillow, truly realtor.com on somebody's website, it's probably because you're looking for a house, not because you're sitting watching TV, and you weren't really paying attention to scrolling through Facebook. So but that doesn't mean that that person is not going to buy in the next 12 to 18 months. And that's the key. So remember that that you're not just trying to get business in the next 30 days. Hopefully you're going to be in this business 12, 18, 24, 36 months down the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, uh, Tristan, people, I'm, I'm trying to re answer my text message too, and I got the second text. In the beginning, maybe we talked about it, but these Facebook ads, what specific ads are they? Are they open house ads, individual properties? Are they uh, specific ads geared towards a demographic or a geographical area? What, do you, what, do you, what kind of ads are these people responding to? Well, the, the main ads that people are responding to are, are very easy, which is ads that say the lowest price homes in Valencia starting at, and then whatever price you want to put. Usually I don't put the lowest, lowest price home because mm -hmm. that one goes into escrow in a day, right? Mm -hmm. So I usually push up 50K, 100K, and see how many people I can get at that price range. And say, so it would look something like this. Lowest priced home, not a house or condo, home in Valencia starting at 350000 They don't have to know if it's a condo, a house, what it is. And then I put the link, check out the homes here. Link. Then I have different pictures for the ads. People click on the link. It sends them to my Ylopo site. And then from there, you know, Ylopo tracks them and then does a lot of other great things. But that's my my best ad. Second best ad that we do is coming soon, where we have properties that are not on the market that we put up. We have about a week ahead of everyone else, and those those do really well for us. We we've actually sold two. Well, I know today's officially the first day of summer, but for us, summer's like May, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've sold two since May just from that. So that's been, those are really good. And then the last so, one. Natasha, will you do me a favor, Natasha? Put our uh, Y Lopo link in here uh, so that people don't. For those of you that don't know what Y Lopo is, uh, Howard Tager created an amazing platform. He's the guy that back in the day created Tiger Lead Solutions, and he just went completely next level on us with uh, Y Lopo. It's fantastic. Uh, and of course, we get a discount on Y Lopo. It's a great platform, and uh, the lead quality is really good. They scrub their leads. So, uh, Tristan, you're saying you're using Y Lopo to run your lead ads, or you're running them through your Y Lopo site, I should say. Yeah. It's Perfect. Really yeah. So, take two minutes, Tristan, and talk about that. Both of my new Y Lopo sites are ready to launch this or next week. Well, I guess next week. Um, <clears throat> so did that take the, re the place of something else? Were you using Commission Zinc? Were you using so, your Curator? What were you using? No, and I, don't, I don't use Curator because I think it's too fragmented. Uh-oh. Uh is that just me or is, it, is, is that everybody. Tristan or Tristan's dial up. Yeah, oh, Tristan. He's, he's I'm at a hotel room. Hey, Tristan, if you quit staying at the Best Western, you'd get better internet. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm at Mobile 6, man. They've upgraded me. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so Wilopo is great stuff. We love those guys. Uh, while, Mike, while Tristan's, okay, go ahead, Tristan. We'll give it another shot on that video there. Go ahead. Uh, let's, see, let's see if it works this time, Mike. Uh, so my answer to that is Wilopo or Commission. Those are the two that I would. Okay, so we got Y Lopo or Commission Zinc, and we're starting to lose Tristan a little bit here. So uh, we're going to give him a second to get that ramp back up, okay. let his feed uh, dial up again. But uh, hey, real quick, while we're talking about that, we had another couple of questions that I wanted to get to. Uh, Lisa Trexler is asking, "Is this being recorded?" Uh, she'd like to watch it again. And the answer is yes, it's being recorded. Uh, we actually put all of our Club Wealth Live episodes on our website. So if you go to clubwealth.com, there is a section there on TV. You can go there and you can watch Club Wealth TV uh, episodes. Uh, so you can also see part one of this broadcast, which uh, was also with Tristan on how to how to get the leads. And now we're talking about how to follow up with those leads. Another question uh, that came in 
was from Kathy, uh, and Kathy was asking, at what point do I do I tell them um, that you know they've got to sign a buyer agency agreement or that they're working with me? And that all happens at the showing. Really, what you want to do is you want to hold off on any of that till the showing. All right, Tristan, are we doing better now? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to ask. Well, you tell me. Can you guys see me? Yes. You can. Yes. Yeah, you're good now. Okay. All right, I'm going to answer Kathy's question there. Kathy, there's two trains of thought here, and that's you. You can either meet a client at a property. Or you can either meet a pro, uh, client at your at your office. Uh, either way, if you're meeting them at your office first or at a property, uh, then uh, I'd want you to to get a buyer broker agreement signed. Because there was one quote that that I heard last week, which was, "If you don't if you don't have a buyer broker agreement signed, it's like you don't have a buyer. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it belongs to other people too." So I thought that was really strong. So yeah, I would highly suggest that you do that. Uh, either at the property or after you meet them at a property or at that first showing at that first um, uh, What was it the first place you meet them at your office? The, uh, yeah, presentation, the whole counseling thing now, Obviously, so, you can tell I don't do it at my office, right? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Kathy if you're listening to this if you put a post in the comments then I'll give you a uh, a class on YouTube that I did on how to put a buyer on a buyer agreement it's pretty simple um, basically it takes you know have you noticed there's a lot of low inventory bidding wars and uh, homes seeming to come on the market less and less well for your new year agent could do XYZ would you commit to an agent and it's about 30 minutes to 45 minute uh, presentation on me putting them on contract. So I'll put that in there if you want to. Uh, but, but I agree with Tristan. That is so good because it's if if you don't have that buyer agreement, it's like saying, hey, I have this listing when you don't have the listing. It's like until you get the listing signed, don't tell nobody about it, right? And they, they could list with an agent the next day. And these people are legitimately going off and working with four or five different agents. But if you're going to be a buyer's agent, you might as well do it right. You might as well have an actual 21 point market plan that you get up, do it every single day and actually work for your buyers. And when you call them at the end of every day and say, look what I've done for you today, maybe I did, maybe I didn't find a home, but they're still 100% committed to you, that they'd love you. And it's like a sign in the yard. You know, that's how I feel about those. And it's it's too hard. You can only work with five to 10 buyers at a time, only work with the best ones willing to move in the next 30 days, period. Otherwise, you can drip on them, have your ISAs or buyer team work with them. Uh, but it's crucial. Yeah, it's like my grandpa always said, if you don't have it in writing, it's worth nothing. Mm -hmm. Grandpa was right. And by the way, I look great in his coat, just letting you know. Dude, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call you Grandpa from now on, Michael. <laughs> I bet you didn't even know I knew the three, that song, man. Come on. Yeah, All right. Love it. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So good stuff. So let's get back to follow-up. Tristan, keep going, man. You're killing right, so, it. Um, that's pretty much it for Facebook lead ads on follow-up. But look, you can see that it's not just the actual ad. We went through the different types, two different types of ads that, that you can use for Facebook lead ads. Once you get the lead, it, it really – it really depends on how how in depth your your system is for follow up, right? And what your scripts are. So it doesn't it doesn't end with wow I got a lead now I have to call them and that's it. It's really really long, man. So I, I can't really express how important the follow up, the tonality, the scripts, the dialogue, how important all that is to to make sure that you have a higher conversion. And I was just talking about response rate. I wasn't talking about actual conversion. I'm just talking about people responding and telling me yep. that I'm not looking at this time or yes, I'm looking. That's all I was talking about. But here's so, one of the things that's really important about that is we want that response, right? I don't care if it's a yes or a no. Give me a no. Craig, tell me no. At least then I'm not following up with you anymore. And I can focus my time, effort, energy, and dollars on the people that I might be able to do business with. So I'm totally okay with that. I, I just I think that you know people don't realize that it's not about having more people to call. It's about having more people to call that have a likelihood of doing business with you. Brian, you and I talk about this a lot. You know, getting leads, that's easy. We can get lots of leads and they're not that expensive. There's lots of ways to bring them in, but we don't need a thousand leads. We need a handful of great leads. We need to, we need to funnel them down into the ones that are going to do business with us. Uh, so getting to that 55%, uh, you know, uh, 
conversation rate, that's a very, very big deal. Uh, now, I wanted to jump on something else real quick that we didn't talk about. I'm getting several questions about buyer agency agreements in the comments on the Facebook page. Uh, so one of the things I want you guys to know is we've got, there, there's a, a document that we use. So those of you that are Club Wealth coaching clients, you need to reach out to your coach and ask them for the will work for free document. It's a great document. And essentially what it does is uh, it literally will educate the buyers on what it's like working with an agent, how agents get paid and how, look, you know, I'm happy to put all kinds of effort into it. And even if you don't buy a house, that's okay. All I ask is, if you buy a house that you buy it for me and it does it in a very very nice way in fact i could probably be persuaded if i got enough people putting their email addresses uh in the comments here i could probably be persuaded uh to email you guys a copy of that document. So. It's, called, it's called will work for free right it's called will That's work for free so if you want that type in will work for free in your in your in the box on the uh, on the uh, call here uh, in whatever venue you're seeing this and then put your email address in there and uh, we'll we'll reach out to you we'll get you a copy of it hey Tristan so here's a question I have for you then you know we talked about email drips we talked about uh, other types of things so do you have a, a plan so obviously you, you've got the first seven days there do you have a, a phone call text video text any kind of plan that occurs um, say 30 60 90 120 180 days out with these we do we do it's pretty simple man we do it uh, once a month for the longevity of the client so it's it's easy to remember for all of our agents once a month text email phone call all at the same time there you go you don't have to worry about it but you have to understand also these people that are in the database, they're also getting our drips for properties mm -hmm. and they're also getting uh, random texts and emails when we have properties that are off market that matches what they're looking for. So that's why, that's why I love uh, Commissions Inc. On the back end, I can just go and check to see what areas they're looking in, what their price range is, and then just mass text 100, 200, 300, up to 500 at a time. I don't do 500 at a time. I bulk it in 100, right? And then I send them out. I usually get 19, 19 people out of 100 responding back to me from those texts. And these are people that have been in your database that you either have talked to or have never talked to. So every Friday we have a let's mass text people for properties that are off market. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. So uh, let's talk more about follow up real quick. By the way, I want you guys to uh, go to the Club Wealth uh, website, go to our blog, look for the lead follow up blog. One of the things that I'm very, very passionate about is lead follow up. And here's why. When I was literally listing and selling over 100 homes a month, I wasn't calling FISBOs. I wasn't calling expireds. I wasn't doing any cold calling or circle prospecting. I was literally spending almost my entire day either on, on, on one of two things, lead follow-up and going on appointments. That's it. That's what I did because I had transitioned from chasing leads to attracting leads, right? So now we have all these inbound leads coming in. So what I learned is that you've got to make a lot of follow-up calls and you've got to do the stuff like Tristan's talking about. It's not enough to just call. It's not enough to just text. It's not enough just to video text. You have to do all of it. And when you do all of it, you get great response. I was literally making 115 to 125 follow-up calls per day. Uh, so, and, and I would do that from the car in between my six to eight appointments per day with sellers. So I'm saying this not to brag or anything like that, but I want you guys to understand that it's possible and you can increase your numbers by increasing your follow-up. Write this down if you haven't already. The fortune is in the follow-up. If you want to make more money in real estate, do a better job of follow-up. It is the single most, well, I shouldn't say single, it's one of the most important things that you can do to increase the amount of money you make at the end of the year. Now, another thing that I wanted to ask you about, Tristan, is that I noticed, and we just lost Tristan's video feed. Hopefully, he's still there. Um, there we go. All right, we got you. All right, so Tristan, one of the things I noticed or th that you said was that you're using both YLOPO and Commission Zinc. Speak right. to that for a minute. So, um, as you know, I started using, hold on, let me switch over so I can stop sharing my screen. Give me one second. Because I was going to... Um, Look at that. <laughs> yeah, there it is. All right. Uh, I am using both, and, and I like I like using both. Now, here's here's the challenge, though. When you see the numbers, and I, I've been testing this out for two months so far, like this. But when you see the numbers, you're going to see that YLOPO has a 
way better response rate. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but the response rate is almost double from the Ylopo leads than it is from Commissions Inc., right? Uh, so better quality leads from Ylopo from my area, I can guarantee you that from LA, Ventura County, uh, Ylopo leads are just better. The thing so let is, me ask you this, why are you using both then? So here's, here's why. Uh, Commissions Inc. has a full system, right? I, I'm not, uh, I hate to say it, <laughs> I'm not the greatest fan of follow a boss, okay? Because it limits, it limits what you can do. So right now, Ylopo is connected to follow a boss, and Commission Zinc is a whole system on its own. So it's better, it's, it allows you to better track the leads and allows you to be able to connect with them a lot better. For example, when I have a pocket listing, when I have a, a property that's not on the market yet from a different agent, I can go into Commission Zinc, look on the back end, look at everyone that's looking in that area, their price range, look at the quality score, look at when they last logged in, all in one little section, and then mass text them. And I just did that in a matter of two minutes. I mass texted 100 to 500 people that were looking for that exact home. And then I'm done. Then I can go I'll walk, do whatever I want, follow up with other people. And my ISA or my team can then handle all the incoming texts that are coming in. For me, that saves me a lot of time. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you have to think quality versus quantity too. Um, uh, Brian, what have you seen, man? So I do the same thing. So just like you, you know, I, I laugh. You and I are both shiny object guys. We love all the toys and bells and whistles and try every platform and model and every, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, all I need is about 12 more hours a day to do my testing. So, <laughs> So what I love about Commission Zinc is that is that ability to do mass text. I mean, that is a very, very powerful thing because, you know, I tell agents, I'm like, you don't have anybody to talk to and you don't have any house to show this weekend, log into Commission Zinc and send this simple text. Are you still, are you interested in looking at a house this weekend? That's the entire text. Send it to a hundred people. And by the way, make sure you have two hours where you're not doing anything because <laughs> you're about to get blown up. And so that's a pretty awesome tool that, you know, really, really works. I understand that there's some issues that potentially come up with compliance and are we texting people who don't want to be texted and things like that. So there's some risk there. But again, if you don't have anything to do this weekend, you have Commissions Inc., just go ahead and send that text and see what happens because it will work. Um, I actually, the problem I have with Commissions Inc., and for all, I, I see that Randy's watching our, our thing, so please don't take us the wrong way, Randy. The problem <laughs> Randy? I have no, we'll it, fix it. Come on. It, is it so powerful? Powerful that a lot of the agents don't like it. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you know, you can probably take 12 hours of training on Commissions Inc. to learn how to use Commissions Inc. There's not 12 hours of training to do on follow-up boss. There's about 15 minutes. So, you know, a lot of agents aren't tech guys. A lot of guys, you know, don't spend, you know, 10 hours a day like you and I looking at shiny objects. So they like the simplicity of follow up boss. They don't want it to do all the stuff. They just want somebody to say, call me, call me today, send me an email, send me a drip. And that's what I like. So we have both systems in place. And, you know, I've threatened to cancel both at some point in time. But honestly, uh, they both do different things. And because they do different things, I keep them both in place. Yeah, that's why that's why I still have both too, man. That's, that's well, I still have curator on top of that too. It's ridiculous. I do too. But you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There's ten grand. But here, here's here's why I keep sync, and well, not the only reason, but the last three or four listing appointments I've gone on, I've actually gone in and said, hey, let's just see how many buyers I have for your house right now today. One of the benefits of working with Team Bjorkman is we spend thousands of dollars a month on Google AdWords. Do you know what those are, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Well, basically, you hired me months ago. Watch this. Here's their picture. Here's your house. Type it in. Great, let's see how many leads we have. See all these people with green? Let's call them right now, shall we? And tell them I have your home on the market and see who responds. And you just go mass text, boom. And then you sit there and give more of your listing presentations. And it starts happening. They're like, where do I love Commission Zinc for that? That is the coolest thing in the world. And it saves me so much time on a listing appointment now. So and there's a windstorm coming through. <laughs> <laughs> what is that noise? Oh, is it windy at? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Somebody's sitting under the air. Oh, it's Tristan. 
Tell room air conditioner below is laughing. <laughs> is, that, is that my connection or is that Mike's? <laughs> no, that's you, buddy. Your, that's no, I have. Tell your high Mike, Mike's dial up. It's here's the thing. It's the antenna on the roof there. When it when when it wind blows a little bit, his antenna blows around. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, so, let me uh, let me share let me share this thing because I know we've got ten minutes left. Hold on. Let's do it, man. Let's see what you got. Uh, tell me if you can see this once I uh, open it up here. Yes, we well we had it for a second there. It's coming there back. Go. We got it now. Brandon, can you make it live? All right, perfect. Uh, so here's what I've got: some examples of home of uh, sorry ads that that some people are running here. You see the daily city home search on your left hand side. That's one of my friends up. You guys all know Kevin Markarian, right? So. That's one of his ads that he's running. It says, looking for a home in Daly City? Find your new home today. Download a list of lowest price homes. It shows you condos and homes. So he did it a little bit differently. He added both. He did pick the lowest price homes there. Uh, next, San Francisco lowest prices, also from uh, Kevin Markarian. It says, buy a home in San Francisco. Prices as low as $679. Download the list, right? The one on the right. That's mine, and that Travis Travis Tom created that for me, and that goes out to all of my all of my database. Uh, so what we've done is all the people in my database, you know, wherever your database is, if it's in Ylopo or if it's in Missions Inc., regardless, uh, what we've done is we've thrown it into Facebook, and then we've retargeted them to bring them back in to the to our website because we know a lot of these people are dormant. And we want to bring a lot more back. So that's a different ad that we're running there. So I just wanted to give people examples of those ads. Can every can you see it clearly or no? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, we got All right, perfect. And then here, here's something that Travis, you know Travis, right? Here's oh yeah, that, Travis rocks, man. We love Travis. Here's something that Travis created. Uh, and and that's it's a long process, but I'm sure a lot of people can see it and take snapshots and see if you can build it, but I doubt it. Here, uh, tofu buyer lead ads. You see all these buyer lead ads on the left. Those are eight buyer lead ads that you have. So each ad is running in different cities. Let's say you're running one in San Francisco, you're running one in Oakland, you're running one in San Jose, and so forth. Uh, then, as soon as they click on the ad, it takes you to an IDX page. That IDX page is your Ylopo site, right? Then, um, if you if you don't have a Ylopo site or you don't have a site that you're paying for you're going to have to have an IDX page, whatever that's going to be. And then you're also going to have to add what's called Leadsbridge or, or Zapier or, or something along those lines that sends that lead over from Facebook to your CRM. Uh, so that's been the biggest challenge. That's why I love uh, Ylopo because, and Commissions Inc. does it too. When they do Facebook lead ads, it dumps the lead into your system automatically. It doesn't just keep it on Facebook or where you have to go and search for it and see where it is. But that, that's been confusing for a lot of people. So hey, this is golden, man. I love this. That's a great infographic. Seriously. Yeah, I screenshotted the heck out of that. Hey, Tristan, yeah. let me ask you a question. We're talking about Facebook ads, and those ads just reminded me. You've talked about it a bit in the past, but since I'd like to see how the testing's been, you have how many – actual Facebook business pages that you're running ads off of? Do you have LA Homes? Uh, right now, yeah. I have, because um, we just tested a new area, I think just shy of 40. Okay, that's like, what people need to hear because that's mind blowing. That, that's, that's, that's a big deal, so. Well, we have can, 42, I think 42, but I'm not running them all right now. I like to run 10 at a time. And I alternate every every 15 days because I find that the ads get a little stale after after about 10, 13 days. So I leave them running 15 days and I switch it off and I go to a different area that's close by. So, for example, if I was in Valencia, uh, I would be running a, an ad in Valencia saying, find the lowest price homes in Valencia for as low as 350000 Click here. 15 days later, I'd shut it off, and then I'd try Canyon Country or Santa Clarita, right? Okay. You're way too much in my farm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Just, so, I'm, so, so, you think there's, so you think there's something in the name, Santa Clarita Lowest Price Homes, instead yeah, yeah. of 
Team Bjorkman. So you really truly believe you need to have there's something in that name. Oh yeah, totally, man. I think the name the name helps a lot. Right. I, I try to make it more generic, right? So if you want to run two different ads, if you want to run two ads and test it out, do this. What well, put one like Team Bjorkman, right? That's your business page, right? Run yeah. it with Team Bjorkman. Run the same ad, lowest price homes in Valencia. Then try another one where that just says it says Valencia homes for sale, right? Just that's it, and just have a different different image on on that business page. And just run both and see which one does yeah. better for you. So, so that's then, actually a stealth ad if we if we wanted to name exactly. it something. It's exactly what it is. And then I would run both and see and see which one gives you the most um, the most clicks. So so bottom line is the Tristan Ahumada team is not producing as well as a stealth site. You hungry? Yeah, that's what I've noticed, especially in areas where people don't know me as much. Right. right? Because remember we cover a wider area. Right. And and I think just the just the fact that you have that name of the city makes the people feel like you're more feel like you're more more local. Right. Yeah. Goes That's, back to the old Craig Proctor days with our stealth sites and you remember Craig Proctor? I remember. Oh man. <laughs> I saw him when I was twenty years old, three days in Vegas. Oh, wow. free... <laughs> oh yeah. That's oh. hilarious. All right. Um but you can't say you can't say his name without saying Craig Proctor, eh? I mean, come oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That being said, uh, one I just want to shout out to uh, Dana Faircloth. Dana freaking crushing it. While we were on this Facebook Live, Club Wealth TV, Dana, being the awesome freaking Club Wealth member she is, decides, I'm going to take action right now. She sent out uh, a mass text to her old leads and got 10 responses in 30 seconds. Way to go, Dana. Rock it. I love it. Good for you. You mass texted how many? Uh, how many did you? I'm, I'm, well, let's ask. Uh, so, Dana, could you type that in? Tell us how many you texted. And uh, I know she did it in Commissions Inc., by the way. Uh, I did ask her that. And so, let's find out how many she did. Dana, type it in. Let's see it. Come on, Dana. They're still coming in, she said. <laughs> That's awesome. So, I'm curious how many leads she sent out. There. Oh, 200. That was on just 200 leads. And uh, so, yeah, she's killing it. Brian, I have a question for Brian before we wrap up. When you mask yeah, sure. everyone, uh, do, you, do you keep track of how many people respond? Because we're at about, it varies, but I think we're at about 20%. That's, That's our response. We run somewhere around the same place. Somewhere between 17 and 22% is kind of what, what we're seeing. Um, you know, so I, I use 20% as a good round number. So right. for every 100 people, you're going to get 20 responses. All right, cool. Nice. Guys, any other questions? I love it. So, Tristan, I think you had another infographic ready for us there. Did I, was, am I wrong? Did you have something else you were getting ready to share? Let me see if I can uh, share this here with you. I, I have a feeling we may need to do a part three to this, oh, Tristan. I had a lot, dude. We just barely got over follow-up. Let's yeah. see. I think we need to do a, a third one. So, so uh, can I get everybody's uh, absolutely yeah. like? If you guys want to see us do round three with Tristan Ahamada, uh, what I'd like to see you do is just type, do another one, you know, or or you know, type something into your into your questions box, your comments box, so that we know that you guys want to see us do this again with Tristan. Uh, but Tristan, let's go to the last uh, infographic there for today. Uh, I'd like to have people see us actually place our Wilopo ads and commissions ink ads Ooh, so they can get awesome. a real feel of it. That would be cool. Show them how long it takes, how easy yeah. it is, that kind of uh, stuff. What, what it really means to see that, because most people have never even seen these platforms that we use. And Dude. once they see them, they're going to be like, gosh, we need those. That would All be right, totally. Do that. Be, I'm down to do that at part three. That would be awesome. All right. So let's, uh, to Natasha, why don't you reach out to everybody? Let's get that set up. I know we had a date in uh, July, I believe. We have a date that's available uh, for a Club Wealth TV. So let's see if we can't make that happen. And by the way, you guys, uh, well, actually, Tristan, go ahead. Share, share with what you're going to say, but I want to make sure you guys know right after this webinar, I don't know if it's immediately following or a few minutes after, or like an hour or whatever, but we have. Uh, and Natasha, if you could post the link, we have a landing page webinar with Commissions Inc. where we're going to walk you through creation of a landing page. And specifically, we're going to be doing a buyer uh, uh, buyer agent recruiting ad on Commissions Inc. So Tristan, go ahead. No, it's all right. I'm going to save it for part three, man. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to be mad at me now. They're going to be like, no, no, we want to do it. Hey, man, over, you leave over, one. I was just going <laughs> to go over demographics. That's all. We'll do that. That's hilarious. All right, we'll do that on part three then. Let's uh, definitely cover that in part three. So let's do our final wrap up. Uh, so we're going to go to uh, Brian first. Brian, uh, your parting thoughts for today. 
my parting thoughts is, you know, everything that we're talking about is amazing, and there's a great, great, great opportunity here. But I love what Tristan started with today, and that's follow-up, because the reality is there is no lead source out there in the country that you can just buy, call them once, and they're going to go out and buy, 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 buy. It's a matter of coming up with a systematic follow-up. You know, and whether you're using Tristan's, whether you're using mine, Mike's, or whatever, the most important thing is find a system, follow it over and over and over again, and then tweak it and make it better. So I love that, Tristan. I appreciate you sharing what you're doing. I love it. Awesome. Thank you for that. Bjorkman. Yeah, my biggest takeaway is I cannot wait to try my new Ylopo sites. But honestly, you know, that that system that Tristan's doing a follow-up, I think nine times, nine out of ten people watching this could say we don't follow up that diligently. And that's probably the difference in a real producer and a so-so producer. So Tristan, as usual, thank you for beating that into my head. And for my team watching, get your crap together and do that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay. On that note, Tristan, your parting thought for today. Um, my parting thought was that uh, I didn't realize that you were just like my grandpa. So. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. I love it. Great. All right. Well, Tristan Alamada, thank you so much for being on with us today. Brian, Mike, I appreciate you guys. Uh, And so my parting thought for today, you guys, is that uh, listen. I love implementers. There's so many people that talk a great game and that say, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And uh, and they just don't ever get to doing anything or they do mediocre results. And so here's what I want you guys to understand. Today, our winner of the extra five Hawaiian vacation giveaway drawing tickets is going to be Dana Faircloth. And here's why. Because Dana didn't screw around. While we were on the webinar, she took action. She sent the text message out, got a whole bunch of leads coming back in. And let me tell you something, that's what it takes. So everybody, on behalf of everyone here at Club Wealth, uh, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for doing this with us. Thank you for joining us today. Without you, uh, we don't get to do these. And please share this. Hit the share button on your screen right now. Share this to other people. Tag people you know in this post. If you feel like this was good information, show us and show them by tagging them in it and sharing it. We appreciate that a lot. And uh, hey, we re- remember, you guys, I say this all the time, and, and it's really important. I want you to keep this in mind. You really are world class. Let that world class beast come out. It's in there somewhere. You just got to unleash that beast. Have an awesome day. We'll see you next time on Club Wealth TV. Bye, guys. Bye bye.